door number five. Seven, snake, clover, and ace. Four people will go into door number four. Lotus, Santa, Jun, and Junpei. Junpei had to ask himself if the teams were what he really wanted. Your door number five was what remained of the ninth man. He never wanted to see that thing again, but something in him said it would be unwise not to examine the corpse even a little closer. Of course, if he went through door number five, he wouldn't be going with Lotus and Santa. True, it would be possible for him to bring June with him through door number five, but that would mean she would have to see the horrific carnage that waited there. Junpei didn't want that. Junpei was torn. Should he stay silent and go through door number four? Or should he stop them all and insist on door number five? As he turned his options over and over in his mind, Ace spoke up. Alright then, it seems we've reached a conclusion. Shall we go? He began to walk toward door number five. Clover and Snake followed with Seven a short distance behind him. Junpei, which door do you want to go through? Oh, I was worried I was going to make this choice. <laughs> um, okay, well, floor f door five does have the body, and we don't exactly know what's there yet. So, so that's completely, you know, completely blank. But we have a body to search. Or number, or door number four is completely blank as well. So no one knows what's behind it. Ah. Uh, the group seemed to be all sorted out fine, and I think he doesn't want June well, I'm sure they'd search the corpse if they if they thought about it. Uh, four. <coughs> and decided that door number four would be fine. He would go through door number four with Lotus, Santa, and June. Why had Junpei even considered doing otherwise? He would be there for June. For Akane Kurashiki. That seemed good. He felt it was the right choice to make. He made no shows of affection, but Junpei saw her as something more than a friend from his childhood. He watched the other four walk towards their door. Ace, Snake, Clover, and Seven. Junpei said nothing as they left. Before long, they had reached door number five. How long did it take them to walk there? They talked to one another for a few seconds, saying things Junpei couldn't hear, and then laid their hands one by one on the scanner panel of the red. Ace grabbed the lever. His face tight with determination, he turned over his shoulder to look at Junpei and his companions. Goodbye. Be careful. As Ace pulled the lever, the door swung open, the mouth of a great hungry beast. Beyond the door, Junpei knew lay the sad remains of the ninth man. It did not surprise him that Ace, Clover, and Seven hesitated. The body was not a pleasant thing. Snake had no such problems as his blindness made him immune to the horror. He stepped through the door, his feet making a wet splack of the pool in the pool of blood. I heard that. <laughs> Do you intend to kill me? I assume you haven't forgotten the door and the remains open for nine seconds, have you? Snake had not even bothered to turn around, but the other three steeled themselves and stepped through the door. I'm quite like that snake guy. He's quite an interesting character. Door 5 swung shut, closing with the heavy finality of metal upon metal. Junpei and his companion scrambled to the door. They pressed their ears to it in an attempt to hear what might be taking place on the other side. Oh my god, I keep yawning. Sorry. <laughs> it's beeping. It's just like before. Probably the sound of the detonator on the bracelet. Do you think they're okay? Jun's face showed her concern more plainly than her, her words ever could. Almost as though in response to her question, a voice rang out from the other side of the door. It was Seven. Hey, there it is. That's gotta be that dead thing. Come on, get over here. We gotta authenticate. That sounds like I did it. The beeping stopped. The sighs of relief were audible, even through the heavy door. Phew, looks like it stopped. Junpei and his companions leaned away from the door and breathed a collective sigh of relief on their own. Hey guys, are you doing alright over there? They'd heard Seven's voice, but it wouldn't hurt to be sure. 
Yep, we're fine. Despite the recent danger, Clover's voice was as bubbly as ever. Oh hey, I'm gonna tell you about this whole dead thing, okay? The dead is just like the red, but the color is different. You know how the red is was red? Well, the dead is blue. Other than that, it's just like the red. Authenticating is the same too. Awesome, thanks. That helps a lot. Well, we should probably move on now. You be careful out there. Roger that. Okay, so we're finally going through a door now. <laughs> Junpei and the others left door 5 and headed towards door 4. <coughs> they stood in front of the red and placed each of their hands upon it. Here we go. Four asterisks appeared on the screen. Junpei grabbed the lever and turned around. You guys ready? Yeah. Sure. Let's go. None of them looked particularly optimistic, but their faces were set. Junpei nodded to them and turned back toward the red. Alright. Let's go. With strength and determination, he pulled the lever. <coughs> Run! The four of them leapt through the door together. The moment they had passed through it, each had a cold electronic sound coming from the left wrist. In the center of each bracelet, a red skull appeared and began to flash. The detonator's countdown had begun. In the long moment that each of them spent staring at their wrists, very survival horror sound like Resident Evil or Dino Crisis about those kind of doors. The number door behind them closed, the sound of metal on metal reverberating down the hallway. There was no way back now. They were committed, even if they could not find a device to deactivate their detonators. Hey, where the hell is the dead? How would I know? Don't give me that crap. Start looking. I already am. They began to run, eyes looking frantically for the device that was the key to their salvation. The hallway they found themselves running down was a long one, easily 300 feet in length. On the right side of it stood a series of wooden doors, all nearly identical. If they had taken time to think, they would likely have discerned that the doors led to cabinets. Don't tell me that the dead is in one of those rooms. Oh no, how many rooms do you think there are? Junpei was too frightened to count properly. But at best, at his best guess, there were seven or eight of them. Ah, fuck! There wasn't time to count them, to be sure. Junpei ran to the nearest door. He grabbed the knob and shook it hard. It wouldn't open. It didn't feel locked, more like someone had hammered an iron plate over the other side of the door. Junpei turned around to find another door and saw that his companions had already run to doors of their own. They did not seem to be having any more success than he had. Their own words confirmed his fears. Shit, this one's no good. Same here. It's not moving. Jun was the last to speak up. As Junpei looked in her direction, his eye caught something he hadn't noticed before. A small red light. It flashed in dimly from the end of the hallway. That's it! Over there! Even as they even yelled, he ran. He grabbed Santa, loaded some dune, and pulled him toward the light. Santa called out to them as he ran. Hey, how many more seconds do we have? How would I know? Our time limit is 81 seconds. I know that, goddammit! I'm asking you how many seconds we have left! In all likelihood, Junpei figured nearly a minute had already passed since the door had closed behind them. If that was true. Urgency foremost in all of their minds had arrived at the end of the hallway. The dead had sat on the left wall, blinking almost tauntingly at them. Hurry! Junpei grabbed hold of the machine, his hands slick with sweat and shaking. He slammed his hand against the scanner panel. The other three quickly followed suit. With a grunt, Santa yanked the lever downward. Ooh. Pant, pant, pant. Pant, pant, pant. See how all these doors are, are locked down the corridor? I'm thinking if... If this group that I'm with now arrives in a room which the other corridor five led to as well, so we all find ourselves in one big group, then I reckon the psycho guy 
Because he started screaming like, oh, he's a liar, he lied to me, it doesn't work like this. He was only meant to die just to prove that you can. You know, it's, it's Zero's way of saying, look, you can die. And he did, so you better do what I say. Or something like that. Pen, pen, pen. Phew, looks like it stopped. His hands beginning to steady, Junpei wiped away some of the sweat that had beaded on his forehead. As they caught their breath, the four companions began to look around. At the end of the hallway lay a heavy-looking set of double doors. Set into the walls of the hallway on either